Good morning, guys. Hope you're doing well today. Um, I wanted to share with you guys, I was just uh, working out a little bit this morning, and um, <clears throat> I want to share something with you guys that I think is really, really important. Um, so there's, there's some new research on Parkinson's disease, and if you guys know, Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease is a disease that um, affects part of the brain that is responsible for movement, okay? And, and one of the things that we've, we've, we've long suspected and, and known is that um, inflammation is, has a direct connection to Parkinson's. So there's some new research that's come out and the, the, um, the research is, is suggesting to us that Parkinson's disease actually begins in the digestive tract, in the gut. Now you guys have heard a lot of a lot about the gut brain connection and it's really important that you start taking your digestive tract extremely extremely seriously because one of the things that we're finding is that they think that Parkinson's disease begins in the in the gut and spreads to the brain through the vagus nerve. Now if you've listened to any of my videos and, and my live streams then you guys know that the vagus nerve goes from the brain stem to the digestive tract, it innervates, which means the nerves go into the entire digestive tract and help to drive that function of digestion. Now, the thing is the vagus nerve is not just one-way communication from the brain to the gut. It actually goes from the gut to the brain. Hey, Heather, hope you're doing well today. So it goes from the, uh, from the gut to the brain too. So, you guys, you've got to absolutely address the gut. Like, we're, we're, we're gonna find out with like Parkinson's, for example with Parkinson's that you're not going to be able, it's not going to be just like some kind of brain focused treatment. It's going to involve the gut and it's going to involve supporting the brain. So, you know, any everything that, that we do and everything that I teach people to do on their own, everything that we do clinically is, is completely focused on helping the entire, the whole person. We, you just, you guys are going to find out and I think a lot of you guys that follow me, you know, hey Brandy. A lot of you guys that follow me, you absolutely, and everyone knows, I mean, it's, it's almost kind of like uh, you know, common sense that you cannot treat parts of a human being and be healthy. You have to treat the whole person. So if it's, if it's digestive tract health that we have to, you know, that's, if the person has poor digestion, they're autoimmune, if they, <clears throat> you, you cannot just treat the symptoms. You actually have to look at the entire, how the person's physiology is, how they're functioning, and you have to look at all these different aspects of their health. So you look at inflammation, you look for anemia, you look for digestive tract health and barrier system health, you look at their immune system, you look at their blood sugar regulation. Everything matters. When, you know, our system of healthcare, hi Kay, hope you're doing well. Our, our entire system of healthcare in the United States is completely reactive. It's focused on once a, once a process has developed, that people start to, they start, um, you know, that's when they, they want to treat the symptom, which is, you know, typically years and years after the process has started. And it's completely reactive. And and it's still, you know, it's treating symptoms. We have got to, like with Parkinson's, guys, this is this video, I wanted to share it. There's a link you'll see in the, in the uh, description of this video. It's about Parkinson's disease. There's research that's showing that it begins in the digestive tract and spreads to the brain through the vagus nerve, which is a nerve that goes from the brainstem to the gut. And it's, there's two-way communication through that. So I wanted to share with you guys, you've absolutely got to, you've absolutely got to treat the whole person. You've got to figure out what, if you have gut dysfunction, gut inflammation, it directly affects your brain. If you've got kids with ADD, ADHD, it, their gut health directly affects their brain. And this, these things are not separate. Do you ever wonder why if you get nervous, like you're going to give a speech, or you're going to talk, that you have butterflies in your stomach? Why would something psychological, like a presentation that you're going to give, cause your, you to have butterflies in your stomach? Because that's a perceived thing in your brain that actually gets, you, you know, you have that feeling in your gut because of the vagus nerve connection. How would an emotion affect your, your stomach? Guys, it's a gut brain, it's a direct gut brain connection. So Parkinson's, we know, what we're finding out is you cannot just look at the brain. You have to look at the gut. You have to look at the whole person. That's what that's what really, you know, that's that's the medicine of the future. That's what I'm trying to teach you guys. Hey Rachel, hope you're doing well. I hope your trip went well. I know I haven't talked to you since your trip, um, but I hope that I hope that it went well. And yes, your mother has Parkinson's. Um, 
this is something that is so huge, guys. Um, it's so huge. You know, the, these brain neurodegenerative conditions are at epidemic levels right now. I mean, they're they're epidemic. I mean, epidemic. Well, the World Health Organization, the World Health Organization had, um, you know, they had a, a full-fledged um, meeting and discussion on this topic because it's at such epidemic levels. They don't know what they're going to do with all of the neurodegenerative, sorry about the noise guys, with all of the neurodegeneration that's occurring. So Parkinson's disease, dementia, Alzheimer's. And guys, I'm going to tell you right now, inflammation, anemia, blood sugar fluctuations, and in particular here we're finding out that gut degeneration and breakdown directly affects the brain. You have to make, you, you have to make a conscious effort to be truly healthy. You cannot go through life and expect to go to your doctor when you feel bad and and then and, and regain your health. You can't decline over a period of 10, 15, 20, 25 or 30 years and expect to go to your doctor when you start feeling bad. You have to be your own advocate. You have to be you have to be healthy. You have to start today and and work to be healthy. It's not something and, and it's something that's extremely rewarding, guys. But we're finding out like things like Parkinson's disease. This is going to be something that you're going to find more and more, guys. It's going to begin in the gut and spread to the brain through the vagus nerve. Hey, Brandy, you are welcome. I appreciate you, too. Um, you have Hashimoto's. You have terrible digestive issues and recently started having tremors. Absolutely, Brandy. The, the main things there, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do, you can do on your own. Um, you, know, di you know, definitely diet is huge. Trying something like an autoimmune paleo diet. Our dietary program is really great. It's helped a lot of people. Um, we've got a great group in there, but yeah, I like autoimmune paleo is a good place to start. Is it perfect? No, but it does help a lot of people. So starting there um, is a very is a very good thing to try to do if you haven't done that already. But you've got you've got to realize that you know, and I think you know this, but it's an autoimmune condition. Hashimoto's is autoimmune. Autoimmunity um, is just it's very um, it's like a it's like a an octopus that has its tentacles in all different aspects of your body's physiology. So the thing about autoimmunity is that it's kind of like your thumbprint. You know, everyone has a different thumbprint. Well, everyone has a different autoimmunity. So you've got to, you've got to understand that that autoimmune process is going to be unique to you. A great place to start is with diet, but infections and environmental chemicals also play a role in this. Stress does play a role too, but diet's the first place to start. Okay, definitely. So I hope you've, you've made some progress or you've been able to do that. Um, Nicole, yes, I've heard of the Repair Bike Program. Yes, uh, it's Repair Bike Program was started by uh, Datis Karazian. Of, um, Datis worked with and, and works with currently with Apex Energetics, the supplement company. Uh, my personal opinion is Datis is the smartest person in functional medicine. Um, he is, he's been one of the people that I've studied the most. I studied Datis extensively. Absolutely, I've heard of the Repair Bike Program. Um, I support it 100%. 100 percent it's a it's a good thing but it's one piece of like the, the process of getting better but it's an absolutely great program nicole so uh hopefully um, you, if you're if you're working with someone that's done that that's doing that with you you're on a good you're on a good path um a lot of people that I, what i found and what i find more and more lately is that the people that i'm i'm working with they really they they have to get testing help them uncover what's driving their processes but a lot of people can benefit from things like repair at least to some degree right um, a lot of times diet if you haven't tried any dietary changes at all that'll get you to a whole nother level of health it might not get you you know completely better because there's a lot of underlying things that tend to drive autoimmunity but yeah repair bike program can be very good because I want to share with you um, I want to share with you today especially um, this idea of of, of Parkinson's disease starting in the gut in neurodegenerative conditions. And guys, I want you to know this too. Have you guys heard of Hashimoto's encephalopathy? It's where Hashimoto's basically spreads to the brain. And here's the thing, guys. It's it's not, it's not extremely common, so don't don't think it's a it's not a really common thing. But there's a connection. Anytime there's anytime you're autoimmune, okay. Anytime you're autoimmune, there is. A chance that it will spread to other tissues. About 50% of people that are autoimmune have autoimmunity that spreads to other tissues. In particular, with Hashimoto's, we see people tend to have celiac disease or digestive tract autoimmunity, pernicious anemia, which is an anemia, an autoimmune condition against the lining of the stomach, or they have um, they have um, 
cerebellar, the back part of the brain, antibodies for their immune systems attacking the, the back part of the brain. Obviously not good things, um, but that's where you'll see expanded autoimmunity in people that have Hashimoto's most commonly. And that's because those tissues look a lot like your thyroid enzyme TPO, which is the target, the main target with Hashimoto's. But I want to share this with you guys today and uh, just spend a few minutes talking to you. I'm going to do another, uh, I'll do another video. I don't know what I'm gonna talk about, like uh, another like live stream with you guys today, sometime around 11. But I hope this helps you guys out. I just wanted to share this with you. I was up, I uh, worked out, and uh, I wanted to just uh, talk to you guys for a few minutes. But I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Remember, guys, your brain health is epidemic levels. Parkinson's, we're finding that, and we believe it begins in the digestive tract. So guys, be your own advocates. Take your health back. I hope as much as I can. Let us know how we can help you. I appreciate you so much. Please share these videos if you find them helpful and informative. And uh, I'll keep teaching if you guys keep learning, okay? So you're, you're so welcome. Appreciate you guys too. And uh, Heather, you're welcome so much. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.